Good afternoon. Welcome to Bloomer Academy, and thank you so much to everyone for joining us today. Um, our presenters today are myself, Diana. Um, I am the product engagement manager here at Bloomerang. Yesterday, I celebrated my sixth year of being with Bloomerang. So I'm very happy um, to be here with everyone. Also joining me is Erica Wasdorp, who is our recurring giving queen. Um, she literally wrote the book on recurring giving, giving and has created so many more resources um, for the industry um, about fundraising and about recurring giving in particular. So I'm so happy to have her with us here today. Thank you for joining us today, Erica. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm very excited. Yeah. So, and I celebrated my 60th birthday of last past weekend. So, <laughs> so, so 10 times months. six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So, that's right. yeah, that was a big one. So, that's exciting. That's always exciting. Yeah. So, I'm happy to have you here with us. And I know we have a lot of great content to cover today. And I want to make sure we have enough time for all of the questions that I'm sure we'll get. So, please take it away. Awesome. All right. So I just requesting a remote control, see if we can make that work again. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Um, and uh, let's see. Yeah. All right. So we're going to talk today about upgrading your recurring donors. So and as Diana mentioned, uh, today's session, just like some of the other recurring sessions we had before, have CFRE credits as well. So today we're going to talk about some best practices for upgrading monthly donors. Um, you know, asking for extra gifts, what's the best timing, uh, what is the best recognition. And then we're also going to do like some, how do you, how can you identify the segments within Bloomerang? How can you find those that are most likely to be upgradable? Or what's the best group to ask for extra gifts? And then we're going to look at a couple of uh, processes as well. And then some reports. So uh, so Deanna will do some demos and uh, run some reports. And then finally, we're going to do a report on lifetime value. So I'd love to see too is while you're um, you know typing uh, uh, where you're from, if you can also give me an idea of how many monthly donors you have now, how many recurring donors do you have for your organization? So just type that into the uh, the chat. Uh, and like Diana mentioned, please use the Q&A for, uh, for questions because we're going to definitely uh, refer to that. All right, so, okay, so seeing uh, 25, 9, 250, 51, all right, 70, Okay, five less than a dozen, 294, 200, 445. Wow, see, see, it's all over the map. 200 harvesters reaching the nation, 530. That's great. Uh, awesome. So, so you again, you see it's all over the map. But what a lot of organizations like uh, tend to say, okay, well, we've got these monthly donors now, but when can we then uh, upgrade and, and what can we do to actually generate a little bit more money? And in the old days, I mean, when I started with monthly giving, like more than 20 years ago, people would say, well, once they are recurring, you want to you wanna kind of hold off, don't be too touchy, you know, like don't touch them too much, don't be too greedy, don't, you know, communicate with them too much because they might cancel, right? And that has totally changed. In fact, it, uh, when we, uh, we looked at the loving your uh, recurring donors and keeping your recurring donors. We, we looked at the fact that they love hearing from you, right? And, and extra gifts and upgrades are also ways that you can, um, that they can hear from you. All right. So, um, so what are some of the upgrade options? Well, you can ask for a straight upgrade. You can ask for an extra gift. You can ask for a legacy gift, the ultimate gift, right? The gifts from wills, right? And you can absolutely do it all. So those are just a couple of different ways that you can upgrade your monthly donors to higher levels. Now, should we, uh, let's, like people ask me this, like, well, what can I expect? What is the percentage of um, multi donors, of recurring donors, that is going to make an extra gift. And it's about 6%. I was actually talking to, uh, to BlackBot yesterday in last year during COVID, they got about 6.5% of existing recurring donors to make at least one additional gift during the year, right? So that has actually creeped up a little bit. And then 12% 
of recurring donors can be expected to upgrade. So if you can do both, you again, you're just raising a lot more money, right? So ideally, you want to do both. But you don't want to be too greedy. You don't want to also wait too long, right? So my recommendation is that you want to do one upgrade at least once a year. Um, and you can do some testing of ideal timing. Um, most organizations I work with, they find that the best time frame is between nine and 12 months. So they've been giving recurring gifts for the last nine to 12 months. So you don't have to wait the whole year, but it's good to upgrade them at least once a year before the year is up. Uh, but you certainly don't want to do it like within the first three months. Because again, that's just too greedy, right? They've just committed to giving you five or 10 or, you know, $21 a month. So uh, again, they, you, they want to get used to what else you're getting, what, what else you're giving them, right? And you can absolutely make some additional asks during the year, but there are ways that you have to do it. You have to say thank you for your continued recurring gifts. So whatever you do, whether it's an upgrade, an extra gift, or even a legacy ask, make sure that they know that you're already making a recurring gift. So you always want to say thank you. And then there may be, depending upon how many times you reach out to your donors now, you may have to pick the best appeals to do it to ask for an extra gift. So Diana is going to show you now like, okay, well, all right, how do I know what are the best uh, people to, to segment? Which are the best people to, to target? Awesome. Thanks, Erica. Um, we're going to create a report here where we're going to take a look at who are our current um, rec um, donors who have recurring gifts with us in the system. I have the report filters and columns here because at the at the end of this presentation, you, you all will get a copy of this so you can build it for yourself, but I'll go ahead and demo it now as well. Okay, wonderful. So what you're going to want to do is go to your report list. Um, and I already have a report that's pre-built here, but it's easy to build this from scratch. But I'm going to go in there and show you the, the filters and columns that I've added. So a couple of things you'll notice here. First is I'm filtering for type is recurring donation schedule. Um, you'll when you filter for type, you'll see two things that re, that um, relate to recurring donations. The recurring donation schedule is the schedule itself. That's the timeline entry that tells you how much they're giving at what frequency, and the payments is the individual payments that come in. For this particular report, we're filtering to see the schedule itself. And we're also only looking for schedules that are active or overdue. This means it's still ongoing. So active is it's ongoing, they haven't missed a payment. Overdue is it's still active, but maybe they've missed a payment. Either way, you want to take a look at those because they're still giving. Some columns that I've added here are the schedule status. This is what tells me if it's active or overdue, and that can help you decide. If you're thinking about upgrading, you know, what are you going to do with those who are active? What are you going to do with those who have schedules that are overdue? And that can help you decide what you're going to do or what you're going to ask from that donor. The date here is going to show you when that recurring donation schedule started, right? So when did that schedule start? Um, Maybe they may have one-time gifts in between. Maybe they had recurring donations before, but their current one that's ongoing, when did they start giving that? Um, the amount here is showing you what is the recurring amount. Um, if you wanted to as well, you can even add a column for the frequency. And if that also helps you decide um, what you're going to do or what the next steps are for this donor, you can add that as well. Let's move that over here so you can kind of see that closer to the amount. So you can see here we have this donor that's giving $50 a month. We have this donor that's giving $20 a week. 
It also shows you the amount that's been paid. So depending on how long that recurring donation has been giving, that calculates um, the payments that have come in as a result of that donation. So this $50 a month has already um, given your organization 450 total. I've also added here a column for lifetime revenue and we're going to revisit this later as well because maybe they have extra gifts, maybe they have recurring giving before this current one. This just shows you everything that this donor has given. So it's kind of nice to compare and gives you a gauge of where that donor is. Now, this is my pretend organization. So I have some very generous Yeah, really nice. Here. <laughs> really nice. <laughs> so we have some generous donors here, but for, for your organization, I hope you have um, as generous of donors as well but that's your active and overdue schedules. And I wanted to say as well, this you can build this in the database, of course. Um, I also have it to go to um, me on a weekly basis. So this just goes directly to my inbox on a weekly basis. So, and you can change that schedule up um, so you don't have to run the report every time. It just goes to your, uh, it just goes to your inbox every time. And that's how you can take a look at who your recurring donors are, um, add those filters, add those columns, and you can make the decision of what's what's next for those donors. Yeah, and so so the oh, oops, <laughs> you're oops. going back to the beginning. Um, so yeah, just slideshow from current slide. Yeah, um, yeah. If you go to slideshow and then from current slide. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, that's all right. That's what you have when you have two presenters, right? So, um, but this is great because one of the things that Diana was showing was that there was a couple of like uh, recurring donors that had started like August 7th, 2020, right? So that would be a really good uh, group of donors to upgrade, right? Because they're in that nine to 12 month uh, month category, right? So, uh, but then there was also a couple that had started like in February of 2020. So, so again, they are basically overdue for an upgrade, right? Um, but yeah, but that's a great, uh, great report. Um, so let's see if I can get this remote control going. This is kind of cool. We have this remote control thing. So we're just like <laughs> going with one, uh, one slideshow. Uh, all right, if it works. Okay, there we go. All right, now we, sometimes you go click too fast. Okay, so so I mentioned a little bit like upgrades done well. Uh, and again, I'm showing you like a, a direct mail campaign for upgrades, especially if you have some monthly donors, some recurring donors that came in the mail, sending out an appeal to ask them to an, do an upgrade is fantastic. But you see there, again, this is an example of St. Jude. Um, so thank you, Ms. Ms. Eric Waza, for being a partner in Hope. And then a special message uh, to dedicate your birthday. You know, So uh, again, this is part of like recognizing the existing recurring gift, saying thank you again, but then here's a reason why uh, we'd like you to upgrade, right? So it's just a letter. I mean, it has like in this case, it, they typically have done an upgrade around my birthday and then they do an upgrade like um, around like January, February. So um, that's, that's how they've scheduled it. So they're really sending out two upgrade appeals a year um, to uh, to try to convince me to um, make an upgrade. Uh, and I haven't done it yet. I'm still giving five bucks a month, right? Um, but the other thing what you see there is, and I hope you can see it, it says, I want to upgrade my monthly pledge too. And then it has the new amounts indicated. So I'm giving $5 a month and it asks me for six, seven, eight or other. So really small increments. Again, you don't want to be too greedy there, um, but you want to make sure that the donor is opting in to the new amount. And that's a general rule, whether it's direct mail or email, you want to make sure that the donor opts in to the new amount because it's a new commitment that they're making. Let me see if this works now. The, the mouse is a little slow. Okay. All right. So here is another, again, another time frame, uh, And this is a much like lower key uh, option. It's just like a, a, the, um, the reply form 
with the little buck slip, uh, like an insert that says, consider increasing your monthly pledge to help end childhood cancer for good. And again, you see there the new giving amount, right? Um, so those are just two options. But again, every time it recognizes the donor that they were, that they were already giving monthly. I mentioned, again, make sure that the donor confirms the new amounts. That's key. Because again, if they all of a sudden upgrade with five or ten dollars, you want to make sure that they they were very particular about it, and you can then confirm that as well. You can do inserts and appeals again, just like this is another example. Um, so you know you can give a premium or a freemium if you want to upgrade your uh, recurring donors, but you absolutely don't have to. If you have acquired your recurring donors without a Chotsky, you don't need a Chotsky to convince them to upgrade their gift. It's much more important the fact that, you know, stuff has become more expensive in some ways, right? So again, make sure that you indicate that. But this is just one example. Um, and then it's key when it comes to online recurring gifts, when you're trying to upgrade existing recurring donors to a new amount, you need to create a special upgrade sign up form. Uh, and again, you can create multiple versions. So say you have a group of recurring donors that give say less than $25 a month. You can have a special upgrade form that has like two and three and four dollar amounts, right? And then if you have a group of monthly donors that that give you fifty dollars or more, you can say, okay, well, that's the group where I'm going to try to upgrade them with like fifteen dollars, twenty five dollars, and uh, and fifty dollars a month, for example, right? So um, so you can segment your recurring donors and be very very specific by creating a special upgrade sign up form. And the reason the other reason why it's important to have that upgrade sign up form is because then the thank you message that comes with that can be specific to say thank you so much for upgrading your recurring gift. We're really, really grateful, right? So um so that's really key with this as well. Um, so and then you can actually like you know make sure that you get notified of those upgraded gifts. And I believe Diana is going to do a lot another demo here as well. Absolutely. Thanks, Erica. So we're going to take a look at how you can create a form for those different levels, where you can connect that custom thank you form and which where you can add emails to be notified of these new gifts. So if you haven't already created a form in Bloomerang yet, you go to your settings and then website integration and then online giving forms. You'll see here I have several different forms already. I've kind of created or started to create an upgrade. This is what we're going to go into. But if you don't have one yet, you can just click new. Or if you already have a form, here's a tip you can copy that existing form. So any settings that you already have there is gonna get copied over and you can modify that for your upgrades. So let's take a look at what I have here for upgrades. And Diana, well, if, if they copy an existing form, you wanna make sure that you check what the, ta the thank you message is for that as well, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You always just wanna go through and copy uh, and double check everything. These are nice tools to have, but you test. still you always wanna check and you always want to test. Now, first thing I want to point out is um, Erica mentioned that you can create a form um, based on the giving level, right? So maybe I have a donor right now who is giving at $20 a month, and we're trying to get them to upgrade maybe between 30 to 75 a month. I'm just throwing out numbers right now, and you can decide that and have a discussion with your organization about what that range is for you. But let's say, for example, this particular form, I'm going to send my $20, my up to $20 a month donors to this form. And this is upgrades for, let's say, we're going to try to upgrade them from 30 to 70, somewhere in that range. Because if somebody's already giving at 50, I'm not going to send them to this form. I'm going to send them to a different form. So again, 
for my database. Let's say this is for 30 to 50. You select your processor and um, this is where you can select your confirmation email. So the confirmation email is what the donor gets in their inbox after they make this after they make a donation from this form and you can personalize that um, create the email first and then select that email to go in here i suggest when you name the form notice here um, it's pulling up the names of the different transaction emails or acknowledgement emails i already have in the database name it something that's easy to determine like oh that's my up that's my upgrades okay. for 30 to 70 that's the one i want to select for here um go ahead and create that and then the notification email is who in your organization gets notified when somebody submits this form now this is automatically going to include the organization email um, that's listed in your organization settings but if you have if you're a bigger organization and you have someone who specifically manages recurring gifts or you may have um, someone who would um, is assigned to make calls to upgrade uh, upgraded donors then you can have them notified and the email to them will include the form it will include the amount it will say that it's recurring and all of those details so they can um, act on it appropriately so make sure to use those things and i'm seeing in the in the chat we have a question for how do you create the emails so we'll take a look at that as well and then we'll add it here. Um, select your fund campaign and appeal, right? Um, so what is the fund? What is the campaign? What is the appeal? If you're sending a specific appeal email for the upgrade, it's your upgrade email, select that here. When somebody makes a donation through that form, um, it's going to inherit. So I'm just, again, I'm... Uh, doo -doo -doo. Let's say it was... A virtual event uh, no let's say it was something right um, let's pretend it was our year-end appeal the email that they got and we sent them to this form and then um, when the donation comes into bloomerang it's going to inherit these values Another thing that I wanted to point out here is because you're asking them to upgrade, go ahead and add those donation levels. So if you're, again, if you're sending this to 20 for people who are giving um, at the $20 level and your suggested levels are, let's say 30, 50 and 70, go ahead and add that as a cue for them that you want them to upgrade, you want them to pick one of these options. Um, you also have your recurring don don donation settings here, which is available on all forms. Um, it allows the donor to select the frequency as well as the start date of their donation. Um, you can uncheck that. They will still have the option to make this recurring, but then it will just default to monthly and it's going to start immediately. If you want to give your donors control of that, you can click that checkbox and they can do it. Now, those are the important settings, and then you click Next all the way to Save and Preview, but those are the settings you want to take a look at here. Um, make sure it has the levels that you're taking a look at and include that in the name of the form, because when you create reports for this and when you rec receive those notification emails, that name is going to be included. So that tells you right away um, at what level they're upgrading. Make sure to create that confirmation email. We'll take a look at that in just a little bit. Make sure to notify who you need to notify. Um, check your recurring donation um, settings and then add your donation levels. So when you add your donation levels, again, this is the level at which you're trying to get them to upgrade and then add your impact statement as well. And Diane, it is always the other option is always there, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so the donor will always have the option to select other and put in an amount of their choosing. Now, when you do ha ha um, have these donation levels, you're going to add an impact statement. And we like having the impact statement because, you know, if donors see where their, where their gift is going toward, they're likely to give more. <laughs> so um, it encourages to give them, um, it encourages them to give more. So you can say, for, depending on your mission, of course, let's say helps a family of four for a week. 
um, that is the example here. So maybe mm -hmm. that's for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are just examples. For a month, again, depending on what's appropriate for your organization. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click Next all the way to Save and Preview here. So this is the snippet of code that you will copy and paste so that the form is generated on your website or where where would you you'd like to put it but i wanted to show here as well once you have it so this is your upgrades 30 to 70 when you want to create or when you have when you've decided what your next tier up is you can just create a copy of this form it, it's going to copy those settings but this time you're going to okay this is my for example 100 and up donors and then check your settings again because it just copied everything over from the previous one um, you have a separate confirmation email for your 100 and up. Who needs to be notified at this level if that's different? What are your donation levels now? Now you're starting at 100, 200, 300, whatever your levels are. But that's a that's a tip that I think um, not a lot of people know, but you can copy those forms and you can just change those settings up. Um, yeah, Amanda, so um, Amanda asked a question. I'm confused about where on the website we would put an upgrade form since that seems to want to specific. You're right. Typically, we recommend that you, so you create the recurring donor upgrade forms, you know, within Bloomerang, but then in an email, you would link to that form. So the form, the upgrade form doesn't actually have to sit on the website. You just have to link to it. Exactly. Um, so just to clarify. Yes, you can have several options there. You can have, you know, maybe um, a landing page on the website where they can only access it if they have that link, or you can use the Bloomerang hosted form, which again, they won't get to it unless you give them that link. So the, the beauty of this is that you can track, right? If they're going to that form, it's specifically for upgrades. You can run reports on that and know that they've upgraded from there. Um, and we have a question here as well. Are the forms free for all subscriptions? Yes. Um, at any level of Bloomerang, you can create these forms. We want you to be fundraising um, online, so it's free to create these forms. Yeah, um, I like this other question. Uh, Lisa said, is there a way to make the donation form default to recurring since we're sending it to those that are already going to monthly donors? Or does the donor always need to click the box for a recurring gift? I believe these are these default to recurring already, right? Because that's why you put it in the settings. Um, no, that's a great question, Lisa. Okay. Um, so it will have uh, the option. Um, the default is it's not recurring. Um, if you if you have the capability to self host, you can make the form default to recurring, but that is something we're actively tracking suggestions on. We know that this is an important thing for our donors. Um, some ways I've seen um, our customers and organizations, what they'll do to is to call more attention to that recurring um, is just to have an arrow pointed to it. Um, do a little bit of spiel of like, you know, it'll it'll have more of an impact if it's recurring, or you can do the self-host option. And I know there was another question about Fundraise Up for those yes. organizations that are using Fundraise Up. Um, so if you use Fundraise Up, so this is completely different, right? Because you have your forms within Fundraise Up, you're building your forms there. Um, if you can have more than one form in Fundraise Up, then you can do the same process. Um, so that I, that might depend on um, what your subscription level is with Fundraise Up. But this is um, specifically um, for Bloomerang forms. Um, and while we're here, Erica, mm -hmm. there is also a question here from Catherine. Um, is there a recommended max number of levels of donation levels to set up? Oh, great question. So, well, it depends a little bit on how much space you want to use. But I mean, usually, and again, there's there's been some testing like, typically like no more than five. Um, so, I mean, again, you know, three mm -hmm. to five is usually sort of the sweet, the sweet spot. 
Um, and again, you're trying to upgrade, right? So it depends a little bit on like, if you've got somebody who's giving like the average gift right now, average monthly gift is like 21 to $24 usually. So, so you might start with like $3 a month, you know, $6 a month, uh, $12 and then maybe 20, you know, $24 a month. So you, you have like four or five options. Um, but it, it depends a little bit too on like, you don't want it to look too cluttered because you want people to not, you know, you don't, you don't want, you want donors to think, but you don't want them to have to think too hard either. You yeah. know? So it's like, um, so, but yeah, so usually five, but again, there's a lot of, every organization is different. So uh, I've, I've seen three to five seems to be the, yeah. the most common uh, option. Yeah. I like three to five as well. And I, I've seen that as a common option. And again, you want them to get to that donate button. You want them to click donate as soon as you as soon as they can so having to read through so many options um, can sometimes be a hindrance to that yeah. um, I wanted to show real quickly as well we had a question on how do you create those emails so you go to email email templates click new um, starter template um, the big thing here is you want to make sure um, that it's a transaction email but really you can customize all of these um, if you want just kind of something simple, um, you can create our simple transaction form. A key thing here that I like using is the merge fields because within the email you can populate and say, for example, thank you for your recurring donation of X amount that started on X date. Um, and then you can personalize it some more, right? That's the beauty of you're creating all these separate forms and you create the different emails to go with those forms and you can customize that. You can customize the impact, but you can go here. I wanted to show real quickly. Um, so if you wanted to say something like, thank you for your donation of, and you can even say here, thank you for your recurring donation of, you go to more, insert merge field or date, look for amount. And that will automatically populate whatever amount they chose on the form. And you can add more to that. Thank you for your recurring donation of amount that you made on date and what other details you can add your frequency if you want to, but any details that you would like to include in the email, you can add there. I'm gonna name this real quick. So let's say, Thank you, upgrade. This is my 30 to 70. Again, that's the name that it's going to look for when you um, try to link it to the form. So make it as descriptive as possible. And anything on the left here is internal. Every, anything on the right is what the donor is seeing. So let's say this is coming from Blossom and you can change that up as you'd like. We're just going to go to email home. Now that we've created this email, if you go back to the form, that email will now be available as an option to select under the confirmation email. There's my thank you upgrade 30 to 70. So create that email first and name it something descriptive so it's easy to, to select once you go back to the form and you can personalize that based on the different forms that you have. And then you just click next and go all the way through to save to make sure it's saved. That's great. Awesome. Thank you for all of those great questions as yeah. well. I see some, and that uh, Blake, I see your question there. We're going to get to that in a minute. So, uh, yeah. All right. So let's see. And I know this, this can get like very complicated, but, um, but just, try to keep it simple. So, but I think what, what Diana showed was also that, again, uh, as, at a minimum, you want to make sure that there's a thank you email that goes out after the donor upgrades, because, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, geez, what did I do? I clicked it. And, and you know, so you want to absolutely make sure that that's, uh, that's there. And I also recommend, um, you know, whether it's like a, a personal thank you note, maybe even a phone call or, you know, anything that you're doing basically like as part of loving your recurring 
recurring donors, that's something you can do when uh, a recurring donor makes a change to this. Because again, they're even more committed to you now, right? So that's really key. So, we, so you can send out a letter or a handwritten note or a phone call or all of the above, right? So just to kind of like show your gratitude to the, um, to the, um, the recurring donor. All right, so mentioned earlier, like in the emails, typically um, ask low, get high response. So in, in, in the email itself, I would recommend using one amount, like, yes, I'll give $3 or more, or can you upgrade with like two or $3, but not complicate all of the options because the key is you want donors to click to get to the form that you just created where they can choose what they are comfortable with as an upgrade, right? So, and again, just the fact that you're saying, oh, oh, I can do a dollar more or $2 more, will get them there. And then they're like, hmm, you know what? I can do $5 more a month, you know? So, uh, so again, that's the key. So don't make it too confusing in the email itself, but then get them to the form. Also, um, the general rule is like, and this is kind of like also with, and I know like uh, Fundraise Up has like all this artificial intelligence and stuff like that, which is great. Um, typically, the amounts that you want to ask for are not the first amount are not more than one third of your current recurring gift. So that's why, again, if you got $24 a month, you might say, okay, well, I want to start with $8, but again, you're better off like starting even with like three or $4 a month and then $8 and then 16. And, and then you could include that $24, their current monthly gift to see if you can get them to upgrade because Sometimes that's what donors do, right? They are saying, oh, you know what? I really like this organization and I've got a little extra money so I can I can make that extra upgrade gift, right? But don't be too greedy, start low and you're gonna get more donors to do it. Uh, again, I mentioned like ask for the monthly amount that goes in the, in the mail, it also goes in the email. Um, and then the piece of the the process, the upgrading gift, like Blake asked a question about that. So, okay, so you've got this upgrade now and uh, hey, I went from $5 to $8 a month. All right, well, you saw like there's the notification that goes out um, to the donor, but also somebody within your organization gets that notification. So Diana, you wanna take them through to what you need to do when you start, when you have an upgrade. Yes, um, absolutely. So first you have to manually end the previous recurring donation. The new one will start automatically, um, but that doesn't necessarily the signal the system um, to end the old one. Cause you know, it, it's conceivable that they might have more than one recurring do donation going, for example, if it's going to different funds, campaigns or appeals. So it doesn't automatically, starting a new one doesn't automatically end the old one. So what you wanna do is go into the old recurring donation schedule because you're going to know that they started a new one because you got that email that they started a new one once you get that check um and you know that this isn't just a new recurring donation schedule because it specifically came from the upgrade form so you're going to want to go into the old schedule set an end date and then put in a note it's important that you um, put in a note that they're not just ending this because they just want to end it. They're ending this because they're starting a new one. And that's great information to have moving forward now. So, and you're going to want to do that um, or you're going to need to do that manually. So just go into your database. So let's say um, you received an email notification that Diana um, filled out the upgrade form. So now she has a new recurring donation going and you want to end the old one. So you can see here if she has um, a recurring donation going for a while, it might not easy, be as easy to find the schedule, but you can open any of the recurring donation payments that has a link to the schedule. So click the recurring donation schedule. And at this part here is where you'll see the end date. Um, so you just put if if um, it's going to end today, you can just put today's date. You can put a note upgraded to, let's say this was a $5 a month. Let's say she upgraded to $15 a month because we're feeling generous today. Um, she upgraded to $15 a month. And once you save this, 
It's going to save that note and this gift will stop processing now and it's going to process the new one according to schedule. So it's nice to catch that right away. Again, that notification email, you get that as soon as somebody um, as soon as somebody fills out that form. And now and now when you go to this to the payment or the schedule, um, it's already going to tell you that it's finished. And when you run your reports, you can report on you can report on the finished ones. But the report we showed you earlier for the actives, it's going to pull in their new recurring donation schedule. So, Diana, one quick question. Um, does the end date have to be today's date? So it's OK to have the end date be the same as the start date of the new recurring gift? Great question. You can put a future end date as well. Um, so for example, um, if the form, if their recurring gift is starting next month, um, you'll be able to see when that start date is. And then you can put um, the end date for even the day before that or the day of, um, maybe the day before, just in, just in case. So there's no overlap right. if it happens yeah. to fall. That, that would day. be my recommendation is like, if you have, uh, like say you have an upgrade form and you send it out today and somebody joins and that's today's date uh, that they start, mm -hmm. then I would put the end date as yesterday for the old one. Mm -hmm. But that just, just exactly. so you, you kind of have no, you know, like uh, just to be safe. Exactly. Again, I work with organizations that have multiple different systems and, and I found that if you don't do that, they get, it gets a little <laughs> like a uh, kaplooey sometimes. So, um, but yeah, this is, this is great. Yeah. And let's go back here. Okay. All right. So, uh, okay. All right. So now you, you were looking at that, you're doing another report, right? So yes. create a report reviewing the upgrade form. How did it yeah. do? What did you so, do? What did you get that 12%, right? How do we how do we do that, right? So I mentioned the beauty about creating those forms is you can run reports based on those forms. So you would click new, build a report from scratch, make sure it's a transaction report. That's what you would like. When you click add filter, again, not something that a lot of our, our customers are these these are one of the things that like oh it's nice to know that it's there you can click online form and you can select the actual forms right so if you have an upgrade form for your 30 to 70 you can take a look at that you can even put we didn't save the renaming but let's say that was our 100 and up you can put that and that will combine everything that's not going to have anyone right now because we just created the form but as soon as those donations start coming in from those forms this report is going to populate you can even add a column um, for the online form itself um, so that will tell you and you can even group by that um, column as well. So it will tell you, okay, these are the people who upgraded on the 30 to 70 form. These are the people who upgraded on the 100 and up form. So again, today we don't have any yet because we just created the forms, but you can save this report right now. And as soon as um, people start using the form, those will get populated into this, into the report. Um, we had a question earlier as well. How do you get to the schedule status and how do you get to the frequency? Um, they're nested under the recurring donation schedules and payments. So if you click on add column, if I just search for frequency or if I just search for status, I'm not going to find that yet. But if I go to recurring donation schedules and payments, this opens up a whole new world of filters and columns for you. So since we know that these are specifically recurring donations, you might want to add those additional um, uh, fields that relate to the recurring donations. So for example, if I wanted to add frequency, I can put that there. If this is a report that I envision going back to just to make sure um, and just to check up on their schedules that they're um, processing successfully, I can add any of those columns um, as I would like. Um, another thing that I that we like to add as well, we met, mentioned here that um, calculating the new value. So the amount will show you what that recurring amount is, but I also like to show what the projected 
revenue is or what the projected value of that is. This is going to default to fiscal year, but you can change that. So we'll leave this for fit in fiscal year for now. Um, but for example, if I had, let's say a $10 a month um, rec new recurring donation, that's gonna calculate based on, okay, it's $10 a month, how many months do you still have left in your fiscal year? Assuming that they're on time on those payments and they don't miss those payments, that's going to be populated into this um, column. So I like having those reports. And again, you only have to create them once and the form, um, the report is going to be updated whenever you open it, it's, go it's going to include the new ones um, that have come in since the last time you ran the report. And even if you schedule it as well, it's going to show you the newer ones that came in at the time that you scheduled it or at the time that the report is sent. Yeah. So again, if you're just doing a, you know, if you're just doing an upgrade campaign, you might want to just schedule that, um, like okay. once a month or once a quarter or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. I I love that scheduling feature. So it just comes to my inbox. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. And you know, again, we just gave you a couple of examples, but if the bulk of your monthly donors is giving you twenty four bucks, just start with one form. Okay, keep it simple. Start with one form, see what happens, and then you know, again, have you you always have that other option, right? Um, so so just like you know, play around with it and see what happens. But but the key is that you want to start upgrading because you have like this nice number of, of recurring donors, and donors want to help, especially now. You need the money. You're still not able to do the event, so you want to be able or not the event in events in person. So you want to be able to uh, to get some extra money so so we talked about upgrades right so lots and lots of uh, options right and then you know you can also ask for extra gifts and again you want to make sure that that is fits in with what you are doing um, how many appeals you're sending to your donors um, and again extra gift appeals work really really well if you have a print newsletter send like recurring donors your print newsletter um, if you have a match send them to your recurring donors. If you have a supporter card or your year-end appeal, send them to your recurring donors. But make sure that you include a little message. Like here you see it, Eric, your consistent support is a blessing. Now your regular gift and any extra you choose to send will have an extra impact, right? And then you see a couple of times in that letter that they're recognizing me for my continued um, regular support. So again, you want to make sure that the donor knows that you are already giving a recurring gift. Um, you can do some testing. I mean, here's an example of an upgrade and an extra gift. I mean, you can either upgrade or you can make an extra gift. You choose, right? I mean, it's just like, you know, we've talked a little bit earlier about making extra buttons and, you know, so um, so having two buttons in an email um, is, is becoming um, very normal these days, right? So increase your existing gift or make an additional one-time gift. You choose, right? So having that extra button, you know, and you may say, hey, I'm testing this for my smaller folks and I'm going to leave that extra button uh, off for my, um, for my uh, bigger recurring donors. So lots and lots of opportunities here. Um, so how do you process the extra gift from recurring donors? You want to set up a special form, ideally, um, that that you use to send out for an extra gift. And the reason is because then again, you can create that special email that says, thanks so much for your ongoing support, um, and but thanks for your very extra special gift today for this campaign or whatever, you helped us get to the match goal, whatever it is that you wanna put in there, right? Um, so again, use that email feature and, and create a one-time giving form here that uh, that will allow the extra gift to come in. Um, so that's, that's the key with that. Now, the final way that you can upgrade your monthly donors, and monthly donors tend to be six times more likely to leave you in their will. So they're not big check writers. They don't have a lot of money necessarily, but they're going to be really, really loyal. They love your organization and you they are willing to put you in their will, but you have to tell them 
that that's what you want them to do, right? So if you have a newsletter, put a little message in there, right? If you have a, a reply form, um, and we're going to skip to that in a minute. So if you have a reply form, have that option. Please send for send me information about including helping up mission in my will, right? So have a tick box on there. Make it easy for the recurring donor to say, oh yeah, you know, I have a will. I don't have this organization in my will yet. I'm going to add them or, hey, I don't even have a will. I'm going to add them in my will. Um, and then Diana is, uh, has created like a special report that actually will help you create some of those uh, legacy um, leads as well. Yes. Uh, thanks, Erica. Let me open this here. And I wanted to show everyone as well. We actually have a whole different class. Like we, we talk for an hour about planned gifts, um, prospects, and moves management. And we also have documentation. So I wanted to make sure um, to point those out. You can go to our help and videos. It looks a little bit different here because um, I'm signed in differently. But if you just search for planned gifts um, in our knowledge base, you'll you'll see the step by step instructions here, right? How to set all of that up, how to track that in your notes, how to report on that. Um, I want to give more time to Q and A, so I'm showing you these things mm -hmm. to so to make sure that um, you can set those up. So you can um, set up for plan gifts, how to record a plan gifts, and how to report on those plan gifts. You can also search for under Academy. So again, this is in our. Um, knowledge base. I'm not finding it here, but let's go here instead. And we'll include these in the links as well. Um, we have a whole class on its own on plan giving prospects and moves management. It's an hour long that walks you through all of this step by step and you can report on this. So if you have this set up in your database, you can just create a note report um, you can report on your constituents whom you are actively cultivating um, for a planned gift, or you can also report on constituents who have already told you um, that you're that they've put you in the will and that they are um, that you are going to receive a planned gift. So if you are writing that report or building that report, you would want to start with a note report. Um, since that's where we, we're tracking a lot of it, I would recommend the note report for um, looking at those whom you are actively cultivating um, for a planned gift. But we also recommend setting up a custom field once they've indicated that they are they would like to be a planned gift donor. Go to your custom fields, so that would be a con custom constituent field. Uh, custom constituent field. I have here planned gift, um, and so maybe they've already indicated what type of gift you're going to get. Maybe it's just a yes or no field. Um, if you're not sure what type of gift you're going to get, but if they have indicated interest in giving you a planned gift in the future, create a constituent custom field for that and you can report on that information. So you can just go back to your reports. Remember that you can report on your custom fields. Start a constituent report for that and filter by your planned gifts. So again, depending on how you set up that um, custom field, um, plan gift, you can say yes or no, plan gift, a specific type of plan gift or any type of plan gift. Um, you can filter for that and take a look at um, all of your donors who have plan giving uh, planned for your organization. Um, and again, yeah, and there's some, there's actually that. Research, yeah, and there's actually research that, um, you know, like a lot of people don't necessarily want to be recognized per se for the planned gift. So not everybody's going to tell you, mm -hmm. but when, when they've done it a lot, and that's, this is why ha having a report is so great because if they've done it, 
then they actually start giving more money. <laughs> so um, there's something about like, oh yeah, I'm now invested in it. I've made that commitment for long term. Now I'm going to be like giving more money while I'm still alive, basically. So, exactly. um, so just um, so that's that's definitely like uh, have a planned gift, and you may have a planned gift, yes, and a play planned gift. Maybe somebody says, well, I'm yes. thinking about it, you know. So so that's uh, uh, but it, it's really cool to look, especially like. Uh, you know, again, I work with organizations of all different sizes, and it's amazing how many legacy gifts. If you look back at the report, when you get the get the amount from the the solicitor or you know, like the the attorney, and says, "Hey, you know, you're getting twelve thousand dollars from this YZ, mm-hmm. XYZ donor," that you can back and say, "Oh, this donor started, you know, as a twenty dollar." giver and then they became a recurring donor and then here's how many gifts they made and you know whatever and you can you can look at that by by knowing that so um and they said they told us so they didn't tell us you know again so they, all of that information is is there so uh, but yeah so these are just the three ways that you can upgrade recurring donors so go for a straight upgrade highly recommend that you do that especially if you have a program that you've been doing for a while that you ask for e- extra gifts you know, giving days, uh, matches, you know, look at your schedule and see where you can fit it in. Um, I would say at least four times a year is totally fine to ask your recurring donors, depending upon what time of what type of organization you are, you may even be able to do more of that. I mean, I work with some religious organizations, they're sending their recurring donors uh, an appeal every month, and they're their best responding group, right? So but it, it depends, it's every organization is different. Um, so, so next step is like, again, you want to create those reports. Um, there is a, a recurring donor and upgrade guide that has a lot of like tools, um, uh, that you can use for your recurring donor program. You want to create those forms for your upgrades and your extra gifts. So you can start like linking to it. Um, and then you want to make sure that you have, like, you think about what are you going to do? How are you going to recognize them? Once they have made that upgrade and, and again, extra gift thank yous, will, do you want to put them in your acknowledgement? Can you recognize them in a special way? And then you're going to have to start asking, right? Start asking for upgrades and start asking for extra gifts. Um, and then there's some, some resources and Diana mentioned there's going to be links. Um, I also put in there, uh, you're going to get like a recurring donor planner. So that's for organizations that have uh, a program that's, you know, you can, it has like, how do you ask for recurring gifts? What are some of the opportunities there, but also how do you now measure it? uh, And then moving forward, how can you, what can you do with your upgrades so that you have a total picture for the year of what you're going to do for your recurring donors. Um, so, and I think Diana, you had a little uh, raffle. <laughs> so, sorry, I was on mute there. Yeah. But yes, thank you again so much, um, Erica. That was a lot of wonderful information. Thank you, everyone, for all of your great questions. Um, as a thank you, um, if you've been to the, if you were in the last class, uh, we gave away a copy of Erica's book, Monthly Giving the Sleeping Giant. I cannot recommend it enough. It's a wonderful read, especially if you're um, getting into recurring giving or just start. Well, doesn't matter really whether you're just starting or you already have a program, we can always learn more. Um, so what we're going to do is, and we kind of missed out on the first one, so we're going to pick two winners today. Um, I'm going to ask a question, and the, the first two answers that I see in the chat that come in will win a copy of this book, Monthly Sleeping, Monthly Giving, The Sleeping Giant. Um, and the question is, we have Blossom over here, who is our mascot. What type of animal is Blossom? Okay, we have two winners. Awesome. Um, <laughs> I'm glad I asked this question because Blossom is not a sloth. Um, she is, in fact, an, an orangutan. Um, so Lori McConnell and Jerry Jameson, if you can um, send us via private chat or via email your mailing address, we'll make sure to get you a copy of this book. We'll send it right out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And we have Aaron also saying here, I have this book. It is very helpful. Wonderful. 
Um, we have a question here from Jody Newbie here. Do we segment our donors in the emails? Not sure how to send email to just these recurring donors. Great question. Um, so the filtering works the same way in reports um, as they do in letters and emails. So if you already have that report, you can actually reference that report in an email. If, if you run that report and you see, okay, these are the people I want to send this email to, you can just reference that report in an email. You can filter within the email itself if you would like. I personally like starting out with a report so I see everyone who's on that list. And maybe when I see the report, I can make more segmentation um, segmentation decisions from there. Like if I'm seeing the report and I'm seeing, okay, I have this many donors at this level, they're gonna get that email. I have this many donors at this level, they're gonna get this separate email. So I can make those decisions from there um, just by looking at that report and I can filter for the different levels within the email or I can um, create a different report and set and reference that in the email. Yeah so if you have 50 recurring donors and you know 25 of them have been giving more than nine months or so that would be a good group to start with for example so. Exactly. Thank you for that question. Um, we're right at about time, but there's if there's one or two questions that are still out there, we'd love to get them answered for you. Um, if not, you can always reach back out after this class. This learning doesn't end here. So if you have additional questions, we have those free resources for you to take a look at. We'll send out these slides. Um, that will include links to those resources. If you have additional questions on how to build the reports, um, how to set up your custom fields, we'll include those um, links in the email as well. And please, please don't hesitate to ask. Help is only a click away. Chat and email support is free. Um, and you'll always get a, a real person right away. So don't hesitate to reach out to our support team. And yes, this class is eligible for CFRE credit. We'll include that in the email. Um, and any additional, if you just want to also email us to let you know how, let us know how your, your recurring giving program is doing, um, additional resources that you might um, want to take a look at or would like for us to look at developing just, yeah, send us an email. We always love hearing from everybody. Um, so this is the last in our recurring giving series. We started out with our creating and managing a recurring giving program or recurring gifts program. We talked about loving your recurring donors, keeping your recurring donors, and now upgrading your recurring donors. If you missed any of those classes in this series, we'll link to those as well. Um, so you get the full picture. Um, in the meantime, any parting thoughts for our friends today, Erica? No, I mean, I, you, know, <laughs> you guys are doing amazing. So, and this is the year, I mean, if you did well last year with, with donations, now is a time to convert them to recurring donors and then again, start upgrading and ask for uh, extra gift. I mean, now is not the time to be shy. Obviously, you know, again, you got to throw in the gratefulness and then also like ask, ask for money because, you know, without that, you would not be able to do what, uh, what you're doing. So, uh, and again, feel free to uh, send Diana, like, uh, I think there was one other winner of the book. So uh, happy to send that out. Um, send, send an email to, uh, to uh, Diana or sh shoot that in the text. I, I got, I got one, but I don't see the other one yet. So um, yes. Happy to send that out. Uh, that that's it. I mean, again, and feel free to uh, to send an email to uh, Diana or uh, or me. I'm I'm very uh, very responsive on the email, especially. So um, and keep up the good work. Thank you. Yes, thank you all so much. You all are doing wonderful. Your donors love you, and they want to help. Um, yes, you're all doing great. And thank you so much for being here and spending part of your afternoon with us. We hope that this has been a great learning experience for you. We love um, hearing everyone's questions as well. So thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great rest Have of your day. day. Bye. <laughs> Bye.